All right, let's do it. Weather for Weather Geeks here on the final evening of March 2016. March is going to go into the record books as a warm one here in Youngstown. Look at how many, uh, how much of a difference there was between the warm days and the cooler than average days. Let's see, real quick, count 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 below average days, which means we had 21 above average days. As far as rain and snow, overall, yeah, not all that atypical. Below average in terms of snow, but the total liquid precipitation was in the ballpark of average. But the big story, of course, was the uh, temperature this month. And uh, with the final tallies in, this will go into the record books as the fourth warmest March on record in Youngstown, trailing only 2012, 1946, and 1945. We've had some warm marches recently other than this year in 2012, 2010, and the year 2000, also on this top ten list of warmest marches here in the Youngstown area. All right, it turned out to be a windy day today, as expected. We did have some gusts late today, getting up to about 40 miles per hour. The wind is still blowing pretty good out there. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the current radar because by the time a lot of you watch this uh, this information, a little outdated, but we're quiet for the time being, keeping an eye on what's going on down south of Columbus, though. We have a severe thunderstorm warning around the Circleville, Ohio area, uh, running until about 7.15 this evening, and this is because of wind. We've got uh, some strong wind gusts uh, a couple of thousand feet off the deck here in the Circleville area. Let's see, is it going to let me query the wind? There we go. Yeah, maybe gusting up to 50 to 60 miles per hour with that uh, warned storm south of the Columbus area. So uh, that's what we're watching in central Ohio. The big question for us is what becomes of this? And then what happens as we go through the rest of the evening with some of the action that's out across northwest Ohio? Well, here's our high-resolution futurecast model showing what's left of that central Ohio stuff might move through mid-evening in a somewhat weakened form, I suspect. And then the main line with our cold front will be moving across I-71 around 9 to 10 o'clock. Putting it on schedule to arrive here maybe between 11 and midnight. I should have some active radars to show you tonight on 21 News at 11. Uh, severe weather risk, pretty low. Lower than off to the west. This is coming in at the wrong time of the day and conditions just aren't as ideal here for severe thunderstorms as they are in western Ohio and down into the uh, Mississippi Valley. Uh, some showers linger into early tomorrow morning. Well, what about the rest of our Friday? It's going to be one of those days tomorrow behind the front. The temperatures won't budge much, even if we get a little sun. The temperature is just going to fluctuate a few degrees tomorrow, kind of bobbing around somewhere in the 50s, low to mid-50s throughout the course of the day. This little weak disturbance comes through at the end of the day, and towards dinner time, there might be a couple of stray showers trying to roam through, some uh, real light, spotty stuff coming through at the end of the day Friday. Now, Saturday is uneventful until late in the day, and then this compact little system, this little clipper, comes through, and I think at first, as the precipitation arrives Saturday evening, it'll probably be in the liquid form, but that may not last long. I think a quick change over to snow showers is likely, as the atmosphere will be cold enough to support that, and snow showers will be with us through at least the first half of Saturday night. Sunday should turn out to be a brighter day. After a flurry first thing in the morning, it should be a chilly, but otherwise uneventful day Sunday. This little clipper is going to lay down some snow, uh, particularly off to our north and northeast. Uh, kind of an I-86 special, if you will, across the southern tier of New York. But even around here, I can't rule out that someone gets an inch out of this, particularly maybe north of uh, Route 87 in Trumbull County, heading into the northern part of Mercer County as well. I think a coating will do it for most of us, but as you can see, some of our modeling here tries to spit out an inch or so worth of snow. Even if this is overdone by half, that means a lot of places might still get a uh, quarter of an inch, a half an inch, enough to coat the grass, perhaps. This would be late Saturday and into Saturday night. All right, as we go into uh, the second half of the weekend again, Sunday's an uneventful day. Good weather, well, good, for the Pirates home opener uh, down at PNC Park Sunday. It's going to be chilly, lower 40s, but it will be dry. Not so lucky for the Indians home opener on Monday. This is a 4-10 first pitch, and both in Cleveland and down here in Youngstown, any rain that is pretty likely morning in, in first part of the afternoon, should change over to snow showers before the afternoon is through. Not expecting this to add up to anything, but I think there'll be snowflakes seen in the air before Monday is through, and temperatures will fall. So eh, not a great opening day at Progressive Field in Cleveland. Not a great day here either with temperatures tumbling, and that'll set the stage for a cold Tuesday. Now, as high pressure builds down, it's going to turn out to be fairly sunny on Tuesday, but boy, a little taste of February. Temperatures not much higher than the upper 30s on Tuesday. Rest of next week, uh, a brief warming trend it looks like on Wednesday as we get into a southerly flow here on the back side of the high. But there's going to be another front at the end of next week. And th this is a chilly pattern taking us through the first half of April. First of all, over the next week, this is how much snow the European model is showing. 
you know, especially north of I-80, winter's not over yet. A lot of snow falling up in New England and parts of the northern Great Lakes. As far as temperatures over the next two weeks, though, uh, definitely a signal towards below average uh, across the eastern third or half of the country. Uh, the west will warm up, but I think we're going to be mostly below average through uh, the second week of April. I think the second half of April is likely to be warmer compared to the averages. But overall, April, and I've been singing this song for a while now, April should be much closer to average than February and March. Uh, the back-to-back -back combo of warm months will probably not continue into April, at least not to the magnitude that we've had. Now, April could end up being slightly above average, but it won't be four, five, six, eight degrees above average like the last couple of months have been. All right, stay tuned for more video updates as we keep an eye on the radars this evening. And you can catch my forecast tonight on 21 News at 11. I'll see you then.